There are many different ways to get the oxygen and or ancillary gases into your laboratory or surgery area. One of the more common ways, and they have it here at Oregon Health Sciences University, is with piped in oxygen and nitrous oxide. The piped in system is usually maintained by the facilities people and it doesn't require a lot of maintenance on your part. Many of the labs, however, that are off campus here at OHSU or in uh, private research institutions utilize uh, a different uh, type of oxygen delivery. One would be an H tank. And this designation isn't 100% uh, across the United States, but by describing the tank to you, uh, most of the oxygen supply companies know what, you're, what we're talking about. The H tank stands about 56 inches high. It has uh, about a nine inch diameter, and it contains approximately 7,000 liters of oxygen when it's full. The E tank is the second most common tank that we see in uh, labs and uh, surgery areas, and it's the portable tank. And that designation of E tank is uh, pretty much universal across the United States. They use it so much in human hospitals. The E tank contains 700 liters of oxygen, and it is uh, full at 2100 PSI. And there are some inherent dangers with these oxygen tanks that we need to be cognizant of. One is the fire marshal will want to have these tanks when they're portable and independent, either on the machine and secure or chained up against the wall so they don't get knocked over. Another issue with respect to high pressure oxygen is this, it's a great oxidizer. And so please don't use any petroleum distillates like WD-40 or any oils around the inhalant anesthesia system, and in particular, the oxygen system. Another ancillary problem that we run into frequently is the fact that each one of these tanks comes with a fresh seal from your supplier and that seal needs to be changed each time that the tank is changed. The next component on the oxygen delivery system is the regulator. And the regulator is just like a scuba diving regulator in that it reduces that tank pressure from 2100 PSI down to a workable pressure. And that workable pressure is 50 PSI. We urge you to use a medical grade, non-adjustable, preset 50 PSI regulator. The reason for that is if you have an adjustable regulator or a flow, me flow meter type regulator, you can either create a problem by not having enough pressure delivered to the inhalant anesthesia system or a problem by having too much pressure delivered to the inhalant anesthesia system or by not having uh, the proper pressure to run ancillary instrumentation like a ventilator. So it's very important to use this medical grade 50 PSI preset regulator. After the regulator, the oxygen hose that we use is a, again, a medical grade color coded and it has what are called DISS fittings on it that will only hook up to oxygen fittings. Um, to carry that 50 PSI pressure into the back of the flow meter. It's important not to use clear Tigon tubing for this high pressure, and the reason is it's, the Tigon tubing is not meant to handle the 50 PSI, and if you have a burst in the hose, then not only uh, are you uh, vulnerable to having your uh, anesthetic procedure uh, discontinued, but you're also vulnerable from a fire standpoint. Now you have 100% oxygen flowing uh, out of the uh, broken hose. The flow meter is the device which will meter out in liters per minute or cc's per minute of the carrier gas, in this particular case it's oxygen. There's usually a flow control assembly on the flow meter that allows you to turn a knob and if the oxygen tank is on, the um, float that it is inside the tube will um, rise and you can control the amount of oxygen based on where the float is in relation to the scale that's on the tube. Our minimum recommended flow rate for any non-rebreathing system is 500 cc's per minute and that's based on the uh, size of the animal and the size of the non-rebreathing system that we're using and we'll get to that in just a minute. The oxygen flow meter in this particular case can go up to four liters per minute flow. 
there's really no need to go that high. In most cases, you'll be running about a liter per minute flow. And if you read from the center of the ball at one liter per minute flow, I'll give you an indication of how long these tanks will last. An E-tank of oxygen contains approximately uh, 700 liters at 2100 PSI. And at one liter per minute flow, an E-tank will last approximately 10 hours of anesthesia. The H-tank, which is 10 times the volume of an E-tank, contains approximately 7,000 liters of oxygen at 2100 PSI and will last just 10 times as long, everything else being equal at one liter per minute flow. And that is 100 hours of anesthesia. You can very roughly gauge how much time you have left on your tank based on the pressure that's in the tank itself. As the tank is being used, the gauge that, is, that indicates the pressure within the tank, the needle will drop. And as the tank becomes used up, that needle will go all the way to zero. But very roughly, if you have 700 liters at 2100 PSI, when it's approximately 1000 PSI, you have approximately 350 uh, liters. And that way you can gauge if you have enough oxygen to do your procedure. The oxygen comes out of the flow meter at the top and follows this clear conductive tubing into the manifold of the vaporizer. If the vaporizer is turned off, the gas simply goes across the manifold and 100% oxygen comes out the outlet side of the vaporizer and into what is called the common outlet where all the fresh carrier gas and fresh inhalant anesthetic comes out.